This is Eric from Pack Hacker, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Track Largo Sling, which I've been testing for the past two weeks. Let's dive in. So starting out looking at the exterior of this thing, um, you can see that we've got a pretty hefty size sling here. And so um, it's the Trek Largo sling and Largo actually comes from the Scots Gaelic word for hillside. And as you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to show on this camera, but like it's, I think it's maybe called that because it kind of almost looks like a hill. Like there's nothing super sharp or like, sh like you know, lines on this pack. It's all kind of smooth. Uh, it looks uh, very just like warm and like almost like comforting. I know that sounds weird. And I think that the material plays into that as well. We've got a dry finished wax canvas on the exterior and it's very soft. It feels very, very nice. And just it, it's comfortable to hold, it's comfortable to wear, uh, but we'll get into more of that later. We have three colorway options here. We've got black, which is the one that we have on hand. And then we've got olive and whiskey so they're all pretty like earthy tones i know that black is as black as black but um the other two are pretty earthy and just feel very like natural which i like a lot and then we've got the track logo here which you can see handmade in scotland um, which since working at pack hacker i believe this is the first item i have tested that was made in scotland which is uh, pretty neat not something you see all the time and I do like that logo there I think on the black it blends in pretty well obviously the logo and stuff is white and then you like that golden yellow orangish color but I think it blends in pretty nicely uh, on the other colorways the logo I believe is still black so it does kind of pop a little bit from the other two colors that aren't black um, so depending on whether or not you want the logo to be super visible that's something to keep in mind with the other colorways um, but as you can see um, just on the uh, dry finish waxed canvas. It picks up dust pretty well and hair is too. I mean, you can see like just the little pieces of material that are on there right now. And I think this is more of an issue if you get the black one. Um, I'm around animals a fair amount. So I think that some of this stuff is from animal hair and whatever else uh, animals might have on them. Um, but it really is visible on the black. You can really see the dust and stuff like that. And like I live in an old, dusty house too. So I think that that could play into why that there is a, a fair amount. I mean, I don't think it's, it's bad looking at all, but once you get pretty close, you can start to notice it. And I know this would bother some people greatly. It doesn't bother me so much just because like, you know, I live in, like I said, an old, older house and then I'm around animals a lot. So I'm used to it, but I can see how that could be bothersome to some people. So maybe if that would be bothersome to you, you know, invest in a, a nicer like lint roller or go with a different colorway. Cause I don't think you'd be able to notice it so much on the other colorways. But we have a pretty basic strap here. Uh, it's actually like shockingly comfortable for it just not having any padding or aeration or anything like that. It is pretty thick. You can see it in the palm of my hand there. It's um, kind of softer than a lot of straps I've seen that are of similar uh, design. And then we've got metal adjusters here. And then it's actually pretty nice because it's uh, reversible. I know when I first saw that, I was really confused as to what that meant, but then Tom actually helped me figure it out. So we've got the, we've got the metal adjusters on both sides as well, but the adjuster actually only goes to about, let me feel it, right there is where it ends, sorry right there is where it ends on both sides. So you can take this off of here and switch it around if you don't like where the buckle is placed. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I thought that that was really neat because a lot of times you can't do that. Um, like wherever the buckle is, is where the buckle is and you're kind of stuck with that. Or if you don't like just how it sits or you like maybe you're left-handed, right-handed or want to switch it up, uh, you can't do that on a lot of slings. But having the option to do that, and it also doesn't compromise um, like how sturdy it is. Like this is still very sturdy and I didn't even know you could do it until a couple days ago. I'd already been wearing it for, you know, a week and a half when I figured out that you could do that. I had no idea. So it doesn't um, compromise the sturdiness or the look. Like it's not like a buckle or anything like that. It's just a, basically a similar to this metal, except there's a little gap right here. 
so you can slide the strap off of it, which I think is really cool, especially because I see that as a complaint sometimes when it comes to straps on slings. But moving on to the buckle, we've got a 50 millimeter Cobra, bu Cobra buckle, which I have seen a lot of love for online, both for this sling in particular and for slings in general. It's a very, very sturdy buckle. If you look closely, it's got some neat um, stuff on there as well, like patent information and the logo and the information about this buckle in particular, but extremely, extremely strong. Like I never at any point felt like the buckle was going to come off. And in a day and age where a lot of slings are moving towards fidlock and different sort of magnet um, buckles, it's nice to see that there are still options out there for people who like big, sturdy buckles. Like it almost feels like if you've been on a roller coaster, the, um, like you have the big metal thing that comes down, but then you have like the secondary strap harness thing that comes down as well. And it's got like an old metal buckle. Like this is what this feels like to me. Like this is not going to come undone. Um, once it's clasped or like an old school car uh, seat belt. Like I, I'm a big fan of this and it is pretty bulky, but as you can see, it's very flat. Like the, the footprint on the, um, the width is not very tall. Uh, so it's very comfortable to wear in my opinion. I really didn't notice it was there. And that's not the case. Like a lot of times if it's a big plastic buckle, you can kind of feel it cause it's kind of big and beefy. And this is big and beefy, but it's, it's flat and doesn't have a huge, um, you know, rise there to it so but overall very happy with this buckle and just nice to see something different to be honest a lot like we love duraflex buckles um all duraflex hardware but it's nice to see a change and there's a lot of love for this uh, cobra buckle online and i now understand why but flipping back to the front side here the last really external thing we'll be talking about are these little loops here so these are made from cotton, I believe, and it's so you can attach something onto the bottom of the sling. I know that they have um, a few different modular options, stuff, things you can add onto their products, Track does. Or if you just have um, something you wanted to attach on the bottom, even like a strap, if you fill up this sling and you still need a little bit more room, you could attach like a collapsible water bottle or something like that. You could even, if you really wanted to, figure out a way to attach a small tripod if you were going out somewhere and wanted to bring a small tripod. So they're a nice inclusion. I really didn't use these, to be honest. I put a, um, a carabiner on there once just because I thought maybe it would inspire me to use it. It's just such a big sling that I didn't really find the need to add anything to it. And also I thought maybe it was like just a little too much. Like it's already, like you'll see when I put it on here in a little bit, it's a big sling and adding something else onto the bottom was just a little bit too much for me, but it is nice to have that option should you need it. Um, we'll talk now about the zippers. So we've got three zippers total on this uh, sling. We've got the front compartment zipper here, the main compartment zipper here, and then a small zippered pocket inside the main compartment. They're all YKK number five, and they have this zipper pull that track is kind of known for. It's really, really basic but I like it a lot. It's just this metal hoop here and it's super easy to grab onto, really, really lightweight and you can just grab it and go. Like it's really, really quick and I'm just overall just a big fan of it and it's all YKK construction. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that there, but there is a little YKK imprint on, uh, you can't really see it cause it's not super in focus, but right there we've got a YKK imprint. So it's all, all from YKK. Uh, we're big fans of YKK zippers here. So overall, very, very happy with these pulls. And the exterior zippers here are AquaGuard zippers. So they have that little bit of extra moisture protection should you get caught in the rain or something like that. Obviously, I wouldn't take this sling out in a downpour or anything like that. Um, but having that little bit of extra protection if you're caught in the drizzle or something like that is very, very nice. So we'll move into this front compartment here. So I've got this pretty packed out right now, and it's kind of a good way to show that these two compartments kind of share space. You do have a little bit of extra leaderage here, but I have it so packed out right now that you can't really access uh, too much of this extra leaderage. So once we're, it's emptied out, I will show you again. But I've just got my phone in one of the pockets here and my wallet in the other. So given how packed out it is, there isn't a ton of space for anything else. We do have this little tongue thing right here. So if you wanted to attach a carabiner or something like that, or if you wanted to um, put your keys on there, whatever you might want to attach to that, but you can't attach anything to it as is. You, need, you would need a clip or something. There's no clip to attach to. 
but this is a good uh, quick use pocket. As I said, this is a pretty big sling. So if you're wearing it on your front, it can be kind of hard to access this top compartment. Not impossible by any means, but this pocket was a bit easier, at least for me. I don't have great range of motion, uh, but it was easier for me to access. So that's where I kept my phone and I actually kept a point and shoot camera in here as well. So pretty easy to access, not a ton of room, but if you don't have the main compartment completely packed out, you can fit a little bit more stuff inside there. So we'll close this one up and move on to the main compartment. As you can see, quite a bit of space in there, almost too big to go vertically. So right now I've just got a long sleeve shirt. I take bring this to and from work every day just in case it gets cold for my bike ride to and from to or from work. Um, it's by no means a super packable shirt, so I just wanted to put that in there because it is a pretty big shirt, but it fits in there nicely. And now you can get a better view of just how much space is in there. And before I go further, I'll show you now that there's a little bit more literage options in the front compartment now that that shirt's not in there. So if you didn't, if I didn't have that shirt in there, I mean, that, I feel like I'd be almost underusing this compartment, but there is a bit more space here now. So if you wanted to fit a little bit larger of an item. But moving back to the main compartment, you can see we've got two pockets here, the zippered pocket I mentioned before here, and then a liner pocket on the back wall, which we currently have an iPad in. So it says on their site it fits up to documents that are up to A4, um, but we were able to fit our, this is just a standard size iPad. Um, so if you have a regular iPad or an iPad mini, uh, you should have no problem fitting it in there. They have more specs on their site if you're curious about a different tablet size. But I'll put that back in there just so I can show you something that I noticed. It bothered me a little bit, but it's by no means uh, a huge deal. Like I have um, a couple smaller items in here right now and then the iPad in here. And this fabric is like kind of bunching up. And I don't know if that's because you're supposed to put uh, larger items in here. Like if you were to have a larger item, it wouldn't be bunched up or maybe the size of the items I have in the pockets in front of it. But that just bothers me. Like it just looks a little funky. And like I said, it's not the end of the world. It just, it just looks a little odd to me. Um, but I'll take that out now. And something I didn't mention that I should have mentioned right when we jumped into the inside is we have orange fabric on the inside. This is becoming much more popular and I'm a big fan of it because you can see all of your gear. Unless you have orange gear that is this exact color, you can see what's in there. Uh, it's really good for visibility, especially in low light situations. And it, especially if you have small dongles or, you know, headphones, stuff like that, it just makes finding stuff easier. So great um, include from track. And this is, let me read it so I don't get it incorrect, is track orange interior. It is uh, dry finish wax canvas as well, but that is their track orange color. And it's not as uh, like super, super vibrant as other oranges we've seen on the inside of packs, but I think it looks very nice and overall just very happy with how it looks and how it performs. But I've just got a little compact camera in this liner pocket right now, and then a roll of film in the other. That's how I carried this most of the time was just for walks around my neighborhood. Sometimes instead of a camera, it would be a um, portable charger, some cables, stuff like that. But these two pockets here are pretty amply sized. A phone slits and slides in there just fine. A little bit of wiggle room, so if you have a larger item or if you have a larger case, uh, you can still fit it in there. But two nice size pockets and then the A4 sized pocket, or A5, sorry, I think I said A4 before, A5 sized pocket on the back wall here. And onto the other side, I don't have anything in this zippered pocket right now, but it is nice to have that additional pocket there. So if you were traveling and you wanted somewhere secure for your passport, other travel documents, or even just a place, because this is you know a pretty big sized uh, sling, like for a main compartment, like that's a lot of space here. So cables, dongles could get lost. Even if you put them in this these pockets here, they're not zipped off on the top. So they could, in theory, come out of the pocket and bounce around. But if you put them in this zippered pocket here, you have that little bit of extra security. They're not gonna go anywhere or bounce around. So that is a nice include, and we do have the YKK number five with the AquaGuard as well. I'm not really sure why that's an AquaGuard zipper. It doesn't slow it down or anything, um, but I guess all protection is good protection for the most part, especially if it doesn't hinder usage. But overall, like as you can see, that's a, a whole lot of space, but that kind of brings me into the next point of that some of the space on this uh, sling kind of feels wasted. 
It's very, very comfortable. I'll slide it on just now so you can see how it kind of forms to your body. So on the front, it kind of like, it's kind of like a crescent moon is kind of how I described it. So it kind of folds over your body like this. Like you can almost like not feel that you're wearing it at times. Like obviously, if you put a bunch of weight in here, you're going to feel it. But it's very, very comfortable. I think it does look a little funky on the front. Um, right now, it might look a little funky too because I don't have anything in there. So it's not holding its shape so well. But on the back, I think it looks a lot better and it can be a little more comfortable to wear too because it's not like in front of you. Um, I guess, you know, if you're somewhere where you're worried about someone getting into your sling or you're constantly getting things in and out, it makes more sense to bring it to the front. But you can decide whether or not you think this looks a little goofy. Drop a comment, let me know if you think it looks weird. But it is very comfortable. But as you pack more into the pack, it becomes less comfortable, especially if you have, like you can see right now how it's kind of uh, bending, like I said, kind of like a crescent moon. But if you slide even just the tablet into the pocket here, it loses that. It becomes more flat. And it stops, you know, wrapping around you and just kind of becomes like a flat object. And it's still comfortable by all means. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a comfortable sling no matter how much you have in it. But it just loses a bit of comfort the more stuff you have in it. And it, normally you see that because of the strap on slings or whatever, just like more weight. But it's just like it... The canvas, like it doesn't hold its shape. So what it, like if you put flat objects in there, it's going to become flat. If you put like oblonged items in there, it's gonna kind of be oblong. And that's not a huge deal, but it can affect comfort depending on what you have in there. And I thought that was important to note, especially if you do plan to you know carry a tablet all the time. But another thing about kind of wasted space is, so let me close it up so I can illustrate it better, is all of this, is space inside the sling. Like right here, like that is, is storage space inside the sling. Like you can see kind of me pushing up on it right now. Like, like I just don't know what you're going to put there. I guess if you're putting clothes in there, you could kind of like smush them into the corner here. But for most gear, like there's not really a use for like the space up here. It, it just doesn't really, I couldn't figure out what I was going to put there other than like if I was stuffing clothes in here. So it is, you know, five and a half liters which is a pretty ample size sling, but it looks a lot bigger than it almost is. Like to compare, I have the nine liter Belroy Venture sling. This is kind of hard to see them side by side right now. But so this is five and a half and this is nine. And this to me, it, it, it looks bigger. It, and it is taller as well. Like you would think that this was the bigger sling, but in my experience with both of these slings, I could fit more obviously in the bell ray, it's a nine liter sling, and have it still feel smaller. I don't know that the Bellroy Venture is as comfortable when you don't completely pack it out as the Track Largo does, but I just really wanted to show you the comparison of these two slings because you know at nine liters and five and a half, that's a lot of difference in the size ratio between the two. And it it's just a different kind of sling. Like this is, you know, very minimalist strap, very heavy strap with a um, large and in charge Cobra buckle. But just to like get a different, like a, a size difference between the two, I wanted to show you guys that. So I'll put this back over here. Actually, I'll just throw it. Um, but overall, I, I was very happy with the Largo. I think it's very, very comfortable. And I think it might take a, a special kind of person to love this sling just because it is big and in your face, especially if you're wearing it on the front. It's like very, not so much in your face as much as just, it's just big. It's very, very large. Uh, it does look a little more natural, I think, on the back, but you can fit a lot of stuff in here, especially if you have like a dynamic use case for what you're carrying. Like I like to bring uh, that shirt to work every day and that fits in here really nicely and that necessarily might not be the case for other slings of a similar size. But a unique sling with a lot of organization, being able to fit the tablet in there is very nice. And just having all of these pockets in both the main compartment and then just revisiting the front compartment again, these two pockets and the key ring there. But I'm curious to see what you guys think of this sling. I've been kind of torn about it and I was like not really looking forward to this, doing this review because I am torn about it um, and what exactly its use case is. I think it's 
just very versatile, but then at the same time, it almost isn't versatile depending on what you put inside. And one thing I just remembered that I forgot to mention, when you do have this thing really packed out, so this strap, like as, as I said, it's very comfortable and soft for not having any padding. But if you have this thing totally packed out, like if you were, you know, I'm going out all day, I'm putting all my stuff in this sling, and there is enough space to do that, to, I mean, as long as you're not bringing uh, everything in the kitchen sink, um, this strap does get a little bit uncomfortable just because there isn't that padding or aeration or anything like that. And it's not like really digging into you. It's just that maybe because you can fit so much weight in this, it really kind of starts to like just be heavy on your shoulder. And it's not the end of the world. Like I wore it um, uh, probably about five hours straight with a fair amount of gear in here. And it was just a little bit uncomfortable. Like I was by no means like get this thing off of me, but it was a little bit uncomfortable, but not to the point where I needed to get it off right away. But overall, very happy with the sling and I'm excited to hear how you guys would use it or how you are currently use it, using it. But so there you have it, the Track Largo Sling. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.